Okay, Year 11, I'm going to annotate and read some of this personal essay. I gave up being Gwyneth Paltrow's personal trainer. I found it on this blog here um, called The Elephant Journal. Um, and they publish a lot of personal es essays and it's, it's kind of like a self-help, mental health uh, type blog. Um, and I found this one, which I thought was quite good. It's about three pages long. I'm not going to do the whole lot. I'll just do a little bit and you can do the rest in your own time. Okay. I used to be Gwyneth Paltrow's personal trainer and now I wait on tables and am attempting to start my own yoga classes. So straight away, I want to write here that she's used um, a celeb name to, to gain my attention. Um, and also she's um, juxtaposing that uh, to the idea of waiting tables and it causes the reader to question why, why would you give that up? You know, working with Gwyneth Paltrow and celebrities, that would be cool. And then obviously the next sentence, people ask me why. They find it strange that I would leave a respectable, high-earning high job in a demanding industry to work for less than minimum wage. My answer, the simple reason, yoga makes me feel beautiful. So here I've kind of highlighted some things that stood out to me. First of all, the fact that uh, she said it's strange and less than minimum wage. It, that is strange to us, but why? And notice that I'm questioning everything that comes into my head why is that strange to us because our society is fueled by money um, and I think that one of the main ideas that is kind of coming out even in these first sentences is that money can take over common sense um, and then interesting the last part there my answer the simple reason yoga makes me feel beautiful um, is quite a, a, a simple sentence in itself and kind of highlights that beauty is more important than money. All right, let's keep going. At the age of eight, I was put on a diet. By 11, I had won a scholarship to attend ballet school. 15, I was scouted and began modelling. And at 16, I had moved to London to attend dance college and model. My career was my looks and my body. I had to look a certain way and I had to be a certain size and I had to be the best. Okay, so if we, again, what has stood out to me here are these phrases, the, the repetition uh, of the phrase, I had to be, um, which kind of feels like she's being forced. Um, and if I question why, why is she being forced, society says so. Um, if we go back to that previous one, she lists these ages and, you know, by the age of eight put on a diet, that's like year, what, year two, year three. Um, so even from such a young age, um, children feel pressure to look and be a certain way um, and so this woman um, Bryony Gibbon uh, or Gibboyne has raised another really interesting idea here that your career um, and if we go back to that part there career and money are the most important oh not just that career money and looks are the most important things in our society. Oops. So she continues, I was consumed. Ooh, sorry. I was consumed with the pressure of having the perfect body. It was everything to me. It was drilled into me from such a young age that if I didn't look a certain way, I would not be accepted. I would not be loved. I could not be loved with fat on my body. Um, ha, let, you know, rip that, that again, these words, not, not, not. I believed fat made me ugly, 
The rejection dance as a model's received is constant. Uh, oh, sorry, receive is constant. With every casting, they are either picked or discarded. Every time I was dismissed, I would turn to my looks and my brain would trick me into thinking that it was my body that had failed me. Maybe my cheekbones weren't high enough, my face too ugly, too chubby. So she's using a lot of persuasive devices here. Um, persuasive devices. A lot of repetition. A lot of, um, whoops, it would be good if I could spell, wouldn't it? Repetition, a lot of uh, her lexical choice is negative. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's the words that she chooses. So these words like consumed, pressure, not, drill, dismissed, picked, all of these words create a negative uh, mood and atmosphere to her writing and to her voice. Uh, voice and tone is also uh, um, negative, for want of a better word at this point in time. And thoughts became reality. Because the skinny little girl I was was diagnosed with a hormone imbalance, underactive thyroid and adrenal fatigue, my body changed and my worst fear came to be. I piled on the pounds. Okay, there's a nice uh, use of alliteration here, um, you know, and that, that P sound, um, is quite uh, a strong sound that adds to the fear that she was feeling and as readers we're positioned to um, agree with that fear and be outraged by it. I was so ashamed of my body that I hid from the world. Um, I was embarrassed by my lack of control over what was going on and it led me into a downward spiral of even more self-hate, self-judgment and resentment. Um, at one of my lowest points, I even blacked out all my mirrors, wouldn't see friends and never returned phone calls due to the fear of imperfection. Uh, she's done this a lot in this article or in this personal essay, the repetition of examples. And you'll notice that she's constantly using the power of three, as I like to call it, or um, what we, what the technical term is really is a parallel construction um i can't spell let's just say the power of three and, and i can talk about it more in class if you like the fact that she uses three examples to really hone in on what she wants the audience to feel and she is re giving these examples to show just how much she suffered so to exemplify um, and uh, emphasise um, her uh, suffering because of societal standards. I was desperate to be skinny again. I think she's used that word prior. Um, whoops. Good old spell check. Um, I was convinced it would make me attractive. And, and this is really interesting because this is where we get to question something. Why? It's a societal norm that beauty equals skinny. I was doing everything in my means to lose weight. I became a personal trainer and with the help of a doctor and a restrictive clean diet, three years after my diagnosis, I started to enjoy my body again. But only because I was once again physically fit, training high-profile clients for movies and tours, I felt on top of the world. But it wasn't real happiness and beauty. It was the only superficial things that we are led to believe are beauty. And I guess this then I think to myself, why? Where does this come from? And um, she's right. She was working in Hollywood. She was working with celebs and with people that make money from looking good. And it goes back to her very first sentence that we are obsessed with image and looks and money. Um, so we're getting down to some of her main ideas and I'm agreeing with her. Uh, because of such things as her word choice or lexical choice, because of her repetition, because of the alliteration that creates a mood and atmosphere, because uh, she used this selection of detail here about how young she was when she was forced to be a certain way, 
And because she's completely got my interest, um, being the reader that I am, uh, I'm interested in celebrities. I like to read about celebrities. So she's got my, my um, attention. All right, I'll leave it there. Um, I'll place this on our Connect page, the rest of this article, and perhaps you can continue to go through in your own time and have a go at annotating. Good luck.